hey there welcome back to simtech channel so i've got stm32 f 103r6 with a virtual terminal connected to pa2 and pa3 my transmitter and receiver in asynchronous usat mode right then i've got a temperature sensor here tmp36 okay all right so if i click on the run button we're going to see the virtual terminal window is going to pop up and it should display the live temperature data that we've got right here as you can see 25 degree and we've got 24.95 if i click on increase basically the temperature going up and we're going to see that increase in value being reflected as well now this obviously mean you can do whatever you want to do based on the temperature that's actually being displayed on your virtual terminal whether you want to turn an led or uh, blink an led that's up to you you can also stream this at a much faster rate basically by just decreasing a uh, delay right so what we're going to do here i'm going to stop this now and we're going to go ahead and open stm32 cube ide and basically write a simple script that we're going to upload here and have this setup running great now assume that you've got stm32 cube ide already installed if you do not have it please check on the description box i've got a link that will guide you through the installation process now if you have it already installed click on file new stm32 project now this is going to take a few seconds great now all you have to do now is to basically select the microcontroller in which you want to work with if you also have a board like a nuclear board or a discovery board you can go ahead and select it right here so i'm going to go ahead and choose my chop here basically st m32 f103 r6 t6a right and i'm going to click right here on this one here and say next basically here you basically need to give your project a name okay stm 32f103 and i'm gonna say virtual terminal okay and i'm going to say finish now this process is going to take another couple of seconds you have to give it a chance to basically initialize and give you all the tools that you need great now once that's done you're going to get this window here okay everything is basically in a reset state now the clock configuration is also in a reset state running at the 8 megahertz internal clock now remember this can actually do up to 72 megahertz okay that's not the subject of the quick tutorial so i'm gonna click on a system core here rcc and what i'm going to do here i'm just going to enable the bypass clock source and i'm going to also give the crystal ceramic resonator that basically means you're going to be using an external crystal oscillator now this is also not necessary as you've seen here the chip is running on an internal clock source of 8 megahertz so you can actually ignore this part as well okay now let's go ahead on the most critical things here that is the adc so i'm going to click on adc1 i'm going to go ahead and click on an1 and that will basically select pa1 as my input for my adc now over here you basically don't have much settings to do here i'm just going to go ahead and enable continuous conversion and the rank is one the number of circle you can leave it at 1.5 and now i'm going to head to connectivity on the connectivity this is where i'm going to select the user so i'm going to choose user 2 okay and i will enable a synchronous mode here that basically going to uh, enable pa2 and pa3 for the tx and rx transmission okay now you basically here you can decide okay if you want to change the board rate to 96 zero, zero, and then click on enter everything else will be left as is okay now you can go ahead and basically generate uh, the code here great once the code generation is completed jump right into the while loop here okay under user code begin now this is where we're going to do a couple of copy paste here so i'm pasting this first line of code now this line of code is basically a temperature variable have been created and we're reading from this function 
now we don't have this function so which means we need to create it okay so i'm going to jump on to user code begin for and paste the function now this function is a float function so we basically need to also create our prototype here i'm gonna come back to it and explain what's going on here quickly so let's first create our function prototype anywhere here user code private uh let's just paste it right here great now what's next we need a line of code that basically going to print stuff on the virtual terminal for us so that line of code is actually these two lines here now the first one is the print f okay so we're printing the message now in the message here we've got temperature name okay and we've got a temperature variable that's got the reading okay and we're passing into the uart transmit function here that basically we're passing the message and the message length and the timeout okay so we've got the problem here let's go ahead and see what is the problem it says here uh the float formatting support is not enabled okay now because we basically formatting the temperature variable to a float so we can get those comma values as well we then need to enable the float so let's go to properties okay under property c plus plus build expand it click on settings then you need to click on MCU settings, okay? And you need to tick the box, use float and apply. Rebuild index, apply and close. Okay, now this error message need to go away. Okay, now it's gone. Now, if we build this code right now, we're going to get errors, guaranteed. Why? Because the MSG haven't been declared yet, so we need to declare it, okay? So right here on user code begin to, I'm going to paste the character variable array that will hold the message that will contain temperature name and the temperature value. Now the problem is fixed here, but if we build it again, we're still going to find a problem because this print f here this is a native function okay so we need to include uh the std io so we're going to basically include std io dot h like that that will basically take care of the print function here now before i build this let's go on to the message here the the, the function read temperature now what is this function doing the first thing we basically start the adc engine then we do the polling conversion right and we got a timeout here and we then call the function to get the adc value from the engine once the conversion is done then we pass that into this variable here okay after that we then declare another variable voltage and we take the adc value we multiply times the voltage now if your temperature sensor is connected to a 5 volt or a 3 volt this is where you pass it and you multiply with your adc value and you divide by your discrete value of your adc now this value specify your bits mode if it's a 12 bit mode it's 1496 if it's 10 bit mode it's going to be 1024 then you create another variable float called temperature you then take the voltage that you just got here you minus the offset now your temperature sensor tmp36 got an offset voltage of 0 0.5 so you minus it from the voltage that you got here remember the adc pin is measuring the voltage and it's doing the conversion based on the voltage measure based on the bits mode okay then you multiply it by 100 that's your temperature value now if we run this we guarantee to get an error why because we got this variable that haven't been declared yet so i'm going to go ahead and declare that variable somewhere here where do we need it maybe somewhere here okay great so we've got our variable adc val1 and we initialize it to be equal to zero now let's give this a try by running this okay so i'm going to go ahead and build and finger crossing hopefully everything is going to go well for us we're not going to get some major errors here but it's important that we try okay so far so good there are no errors building building mm. first problem okay this is just a warning okay let me see it's a warning why are we getting the warning 
it say one implicit declaration of function string length okay implicit declaration of function string length okay so we basically miss something here okay we need something else here that is the string native header file okay so we need that and i'm going to go ahead and just copy and paste it right here now one more try let's build again Okay, this time around the error is gone and the warning is gone basically and we are good to go now as you can see the hex file haven't been created we need to load the hex file into the proteus lab center so i'm going to go ahead and click on property again and let's go ahead and click on mcu post build output and here we need to click on convert to binary file and convert to hex file and we're gonna click and apply okay and rebuild index apply and close okay now if we build this again we should have the hex file must be created for us great as you can see we've got the stm32 virtual terminal that hex and now if i expand the debug file here the debug folder there is my file so i need to click here and i need to find it basically show in system explorer so it's going to open the system explorer Great, now it's copied the system explorer. So I copied the link where my hex file was generated. Okay, great. Now let's go ahead and click on our IC, right? And edit properties. Okay, then we need to basically click on the program file so that we can find our hex file. Okay, and here, as you can see, I'm using the old one. And now I'm going to paste the link to where the new one is located okay and here is our file stm32 f103 virtual terminal that hex and i'm gonna open it and i'm gonna say okay great now let's go ahead and run this program and the virtual terminal should pop up somewhere here there we go and as you can see we do not have any delay on our program and everything is printing much faster now if i increase here the temperature right we should also see an increase in the temperature value it's 2593 let's make it 27 okay it's 2678 2690 right now there is a little bit of a hack here because my cpu is overloaded a bit here as you can see here cpu is loaded 2561 right because i'm also recording so it takes quite a bit of resources but you get the message so this is basically how it's working so you can decrease it okay there we have it so the temperature is going to take some times but it is eventually going to get to the number on the temperature set now if you've got a slightly faster cpu than the one i'm using that's currently overloaded you should see your data display much faster so that is it guys if you find this tutorial useful please make sure you thumbs up and subscribe to simtech channel thank you so much for watching until next time cheers